government plans to take after the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, the new plan to ensure customers can gain access to their money tomorrow amid fears more banks could fall. Panicked customers lining up at other banks this weekend, what the Treasury Secretary said about a bailout. We're not going to do that again. And what you need to know about your money. Catastrophic flooding in California, a levee break sending water gushing into towns below, stranded residents rescued by helicopter, and now funnel clouds and hail pounding the region. On the East Coast, the first major nor'easter of the season starts tomorrow. How much snow will some areas get? Deadly journey, at least eight people killed, more missing when their boat capsized off San Diego. Why authorities suspect human smugglers. Former Pre Vice President Mike Pence takes a big swing at former President Trump. Why Pence says his old partner put his whole family in danger. One state warning people to avoid travel to all of Mexico just as spring break ramps up should Americans be canceling their trips. Plus, a young girl's songwriting goes global. How musicians from around the world brought it to life. This is NBC Nightly News with Kate Snow. Good evening. We start tonight with a lot of breaking news. After a weekend of working in overdrive, the Treasury Secretary, along with the Fed and the FDIC, just announced a new plan to ease fears surrounding the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. The goal to prevent more panic and the failure of more banks. But at nearly the same time that statement came out, there was word of yet another bank that has been forced to close, Signature Bank in New York City. The race against the clock this weekend was to find some sort of solution for depositors at Silicon Valley Bank who are owed billions of dollars and to have that solution before the markets open tomorrow morning. Experts have been clear it is highly unlikely this will turn into a major meltdown like what happened in 2008. We're going to do our best to break down what it means for the economy and your money. We have two reports tonight, beginning with George Solis. Tonight, the federal government working to calm fears announcing they will back all deposits at Silicon Valley Bank after their historic fall. Customers will be able to get their money as soon as tomorrow. Authorities also said they closed Signature Bank in New York City, adding that any losses by customers will be recovered. Now fears that other banks could also fall. Long lines could be seen formed outside First Republic Bank this weekend. The bank trying to assure customers in a statement saying, we want to reinforce the safety and stability of First Republic Adding, our capital remains strong. The news comes just hours after Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen indicated there would be no government bailout following the financial collapse of 2008. The reforms that have been put in place means that we're not going to do that again. Silicon Valley Bank serves more than half of the once booming tech scene, but small business owners have their money tied up too. This is everything that we have saved. Amanda Babcock is a seller on the popular site Etsy. She says say. relief can't come soon enough. And you're not a giant tech startup. You're not investing millions. This is your livelihood. It is. It is. And it affects, like I said, it affects us putting food on our tables next week. Tonight, growing outrage over SVB management. CNBC reporting bank employees received their annual bonuses just hours before the bank was seized by regulators. Payments reportedly in the works days before the bank's collapse, according to sources. Just hours ago, CNBC learned that the FDIC held an auction to buy SVB. Last bids were due at 2 p.m. today. Still, customers remain worried about their financial future. We have went to two other banks and have started withdrawing the funds. Yeah, Kate, it was a massive scramble for government agencies this weekend. They work to resolve this as soon as possible before Asian and European markets open tomorrow. Kate? George Solis reporting. George, thank you. I want to bring in CNBC's Mike Santoli. Uh, Mike, what can you tell us about this latest closure with Signature Bank? Well, Signature Bank was another struggling institution. It actually was targeted last year by investors and, and depositors as potentially being at risk. Uh, they specialize, by the way, in lending to the cryptocurrency industry. So it is a relatively kind of narrowly focused bank, one that has struggled along with some other lenders uh, to crypto. So now this essentially uh, has regulators forcing it to close. And they also, uh, all their depositors will be made whole as well. OK, well, that's good news. What, what does all of this mean for everyday people out there concerned about their savings? 
Well, in the most basic terms, it means they need not be concerned about the security of their funds in just about any bank. So uh, deposits will be backstopped. This new program by the Fed and the Treasury and the FDIC is going to allow banks, if they need it, to access funds that they can uh, essentially make sure all deposits are safe uh, out there. And, and, and of course, there's only really uh, has been a question for deposits above $250,000 per account, uh, up to $250,000. The FDIC already had insurance. So this mm -hmm. is for larger accounts. All right. Mike Santoli with CNBC. Mike, thank you. Thank you. The catastrophic flooding along the central California coast is only getting worse tonight. A second round of heavy rain is heading for the state. A levee has also been breached and evacuations are underway. And tonight, a new warning that in some areas, the tap water is no longer safe to drink. Steve Patterson has the latest. Pounding hail in Central California as wild weather pummels the West. I felt really, really scared because it sounded really, really, really noisy, like there was a tornado out there. Near Fresno, the National Weather Service confirmed several funnel clouds Saturday, but no tornado touchdowns. A failed levy in Northern California's Monterey County, swamping the community of Pajaro, the sheriff urging people to follow evacuation orders. What's your warning to people that do not want to leave? For people who don't want to leave, um, I got to tell you, I don't want to be at your funeral. I don't want to read about you in the papers about the loss of life. We got visual. Rescuers pulling more than 150 people to safety already. This man lifted from danger by the California Highway Patrol just south in Salinas. So far, the sheriff's office has helped more than 2,000 people evacuate the high water. The water is unsafe to drink, so you don't have drinking water. People can't survive without clean drinking water. So staying put does you no good, it does your family no good, it puts everybody in danger. The breach, now as much as 150 feet wide, too big to drop sandbags from the air to patch the gap. And officials say conditions are too dangerous to inspect the levee on the ground. As evacuations continue, some are staying put, hoping the water doesn't continue to rise. Me and my family chose to stay at the last minute, so if we lose power, that's when we're going to choose to leave. And Steve's with me now. Steve, we know another storm system is moving in. What does that mean for the area? Well, Kate, as you might imagine, it means an even larger flood on top of the fact that the people who need to get to that levee breach so they can fix it still likely won't be able to. All of this making it an even more dangerous situation for people who are choosing to stay. Kate? Steve Patterson, thank you. And there's another dangerous storm to tell you about, this one heading to the East Coast. Let's bring in meteorologist Angie Lastman. Angie, this will be our first nor'easter of the year. It will, and it's going to be an impactful one at that. Kate, this is something that the Northeast and the Mid-Atlantic will deal with in the coming days. We already see the snow draped across parts of the Great Lakes, the rain focused towards the Mid-Atlantic. But as we move through the rest of the night tonight and into tomorrow, a low develops offshore. This is going to bring heavy snow, heavy wet snow, and rain across the I-95 corridor, the interior areas of the northeast though that's where the heaviest snow will be falling as the temperatures drop on Tuesday it transitions over to snow and we're looking at the gusty winds with this as well as far as totals are concerned one to two feet in those higher elevations as far as winds are concerned we're going to be dealing with 50 to 60 mile per hour winds Kate that means widespread to scattered power outages through the next couple of days. And maybe rough travel, right? Angie Indeed. Lastman. Angie, thank you so much. There is breaking news tonight about a deadly accident off the coast of San Diego. Two boats carrying migrants capsized, and officials are now searching for survivors of what they believe was part of a human smuggling operation. Jesse Kirsch reports. At least eight people are dead in San Diego tonight, and possibly more than a dozen are unaccounted for after authorities say a pair of suspected smuggling boats capsized. Some of the victims were Mexican, according to the consulate. This is the uh, one of the worst maritime smuggling tragedies that I can think of in California, certainly here in the city of San Diego. Officials say around midnight, a Spanish speaker called 911. What's coming in is a rescue call. Uh, that person reported uh, that there were approximately 15 people and eight people on two vessels that had overturned. Officials say high tide made it harder for lifeguards to reach the victims with low visibility, limiting overnight searches by air. Eventually, first responders discovering two overturned boats, finding adult bodies on the beach and in the water. There's long inshore holes. So if you step into those holes, those rip currents will pull you along the shore and then back out to sea. With conditions improving today, the search expanding. Sadly, this tragedy continues, has been happening for quite some time. 
Officials did not say where the boats came from, but suspect this was human trafficking, a crime they say has skyrocketed in the area recently, with 23 people being killed at sea in Southern California since 2021 alone. This is not necessarily people trying to find a better life. These people are often labor trafficked and sex trafficked. Lives perhaps already under duress, now cut short. Jesse Kirsch, NBC News. To politics now and new comments from former Pre Vice President Mike Pence about former President Donald Trump. Pence saying his boss was reckless and suggesting Mr. Trump put him and his family in danger during the attack on the Capitol. Here's Ali Rafa. In his most blistering criticism yet, former Vice President Mike Pence laid into his former boss at a Washington dinner Saturday night for the danger he faced. As a result of former President Trump's pressure campaign to overturn the 2020 election. And I hope Mike is going to do the right thing. I hope so. President Trump was wrong. I had no right to overturn the election, he said. His reckless words endangered my family and everyone at the Capitol that day. And I know that history will hold Donald Trump accountable. The one-time unwavering Trump ally not mincing words. But the event did not allow any cameras. Pence not so subtly mulling his own bid for the White House, as former President Trump prepares to make his 2024 Iowa debut tomorrow. The visit coming just days after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis made his own trip to the early caucus state. DeSantis, not yet an official candidate, spent last night in another key early primary state, Nevada. I'm optimistic about uh, our state and Florida, but I'm optimistic uh, that we can see success in other states. Mr. Trump spending his weekend huddling with lawyers at his Mar-a-Lago home, preparing for next steps in a Manhattan probe investigating a 2016 hush money payment his former attorney Michael Cohen made on his behalf to former adult film star Stormy Daniels. Cohen set to testify tomorrow before a grand jury, with signs a possible indictment may come soon. Mr. Trump, also invited to testify, has denied any wrongdoing. Meanwhile, another expected 2024 contender, President Biden, taking criticism from within his own party amid reports his administration will approve a controversial oil drilling operation in Alaska, marking a potential reversal of a campaign promise not to allow new drilling on federal lands. Environmentalists now furious, while Alaska's lawmakers believe the project will bring new jobs to the region. And Allie's with me now. The White House is denying any decision has been made about drilling in Alaska. That's right. The White House says Interior Secretary Deb Holland will make an independent decision on the project. That final call by Holland, who fought against this endeavor while in Congress, expected in the coming days, Kate. Ali Rafa for us. Ali, thank you. Still ahead tonight, a new warning for spring breakers heading to Mexico should you cancel your trip. Also, the toxic danger now showing up on Florida's Gulf Shore. There's a new warning tonight about traveling to Mexico, and it couldn't come at a worse time. It is one of the most popular destinations for spring breakers. But now, officials in Texas say recent violence has made Mexico much too dangerous. Guad Venegas has the latest. As spring breakers flood popular tourist destinations in Mexico... It's vacation, it's beautiful, it's paradise. Tonight, Texas state officials urging residents to avoid travel to the country. The Department of Public Safety saying drug cartel violence and other criminal activity represent a significant threat. Obviously, the border is a very different place than Cancun. It's much more tourist based, so it feels a lot more homey and a lot more safer here. The advisory coming after four Americans were kidnapped and two of them killed in Mexico. Mexico, here we come. This video showing the group while on their journey before the attack. Yet the U.S. Department of State's latest guidance only lists six Mexican states under a do not travel advisory. Destinations like Kabul and Cancun remain in a level two advisory warning visitors to exercise increased caution. For someone that has already planned their travel, uh, would you advise them to reconsider or cancel their travel later this month? Take everything on a case-by-case -case basis. This is an individual decision that has to be made based on what you learn about the resort area you're going to. Stay uh, away from level four State Department do not travel states. Reconsider any travel to the level three category states from the State Department. 
Back in Texas, the FBI is also investigating the disappearance of three U.S. residents who crossed into Mexico three weeks ago and never returned. They were going towards uh, to a flea market to sell some clothing articles. One of the uh, ladies' husbands was uh, in constant communication. Then all of a sudden, lost contact. Yet thousands of Americans are expected to arrive at Mexican hotspot destinations. And for those that are traveling to Mexico, it's recommended to turn on location services on your cell phone, share that with someone in the U.S., and talk to your hotel about airport transfers. Kate? Glad, thank you. Now to a growing danger in, an, in another spring break hotspot. There's been a flare-up of toxic red tide along parts of Florida's Gulf Coast. The harmful algae blooms are hazardous to the health, killing fish and causing rashes and breathing issues for beachgoers. There's been a volcano eruption in Indonesia. Take a look at this. It happened yesterday on the densely populated island of Java. You can see the tower of thick ash and smoke that spread for at least four miles. Tourism in the area has been halted, and residents living in neighborhoods below the volcano had to leave. But so far, no deaths have been reported. Coming up, the new job scams, what you need to know before responding to those online help wanted listings, plus the music makers, how one young girl's song spread around the world. Job hunting can be a stressful experience, right? But there is another reason for job seekers to stay on their toes. Online job posting scams. NBC's Rahema Ellis has the story. Everything seemed like so awesome. 23-year-old Callie Heim had just graduated from college and was thrilled to land her first job as a social media marketer with a California-based firm, or so she thought. It seemed super legitimate. They asked for the front and back of my ID, and I was thinking, oh, they just need to identify who I am. But then a red flag. What made you suspicious? I needed this computer, phone, and printer, and then I would have had to use my own credit card information to buy the equipment. So I would have been out $2,500 and they had my banking information now. The stunning realization posted online and went viral. I got scammed by a LinkedIn job posting. She's not alone. In the first three quarters of 2022, the Federal Trade Commission receives 70,000 job scam reports with a loss of $250 million. The scammers have become so sophisticated. They will post ads on known sites that look exactly like a real employer's ad. Aware of the problem, legitimate job sites are fighting back. Indeed says it removes tens of millions of job listings each month that do not meet our quality guidelines. LinkedIn says they have introduced new tools, making it easier to recognize and avoid suspicious jobs. The Better Business Bureau has a running database of all the fake opportunities that have been reported to them. We looked at some recent postings. You're saying they're red flags. What are they? Well, the high salary uh, for part-time work with no experience required, no CV required. Meaning no resume. No resume and fast interview via chat. That's definitely a red flag that the job isn't real. The listings company, Social Sales Rep, could not be reached for comment. How can people check to see if a job is legitimate or not? Well, the first step is to go to any search engine and type in the name of the job and is this legitimate, is this real, is this a scam? As for Callie Heim, she finally did get her dream job and over the internet. It's exactly what I was looking for, but I just couldn't quite find it at first. A cautionary tale for online job seekers everywhere. Rahima Ellis, NBC News, New York. When we come back, the musicians worldwide transforming one little girl's sheet music into a surprise global symphony. There's good news tonight about the moving power of music and the performers worldwide who transformed one little girl's sheet music into a global phenomenon. 10-year-old Olive Wallace loves music Change your bow there. The fifth grader from Avon Grove Intermediate School near Philadelphia plays violin, clarinet, and sings. She wanted to write some moody music for a virtual world she created, so she wrote a staff and hand wrote the notes. I thought it would be fun surprise if a couple of musicians uh, played it. Her mom, Mimi, found it and posted on TikTok. 
So my 10 year old daughter wrote this. Could somebody play this? Um, I need to know. I need to know if it's any, any good, if it makes any sense. So I wrote it out. The response was overwhelming. From the piano, to the guitar, even the harp. Musicians from around the world created and shared their own versions of Olive's song. Seattle Pacific University music professor Christopher Hansen was one of them. You see this video on TikTok, right? Yeah. It just kind of kept coming back in my head of, it would be really cool to respond to this. Like, I want to be a part of this conversation. Hansen happened to be at a conference for music educators and turned Olive's melody into a composition for strings. Days later, middle school kids performed it. For Olive, Mom Mimi, and Dad Adam, it meant the world. He made it sound beautiful. He gave it life and really was a huge part of making this go to so many people. The gift of music, bringing joy to a new generation. What do you hope happens to your composition? I really hope that it just inspires more music making, specifically with music students in public schools. I want them to see all students have the opportunity to make music and to share it with other people.